Okay, here's the second Tony Banks electric piano video. Um, I Something I left out from my pianet video is it's important to know the range of these instruments if you want to be really correct and wonder why things may... I can't think of a specific example, but I'm sure there's range issues. So look at the range of the Honer pianet. It goes from F... right do I so it looks like they gray out the areas that the instrument didn't exist so um, let me go to my amplitude and turn that fuzz off okay back to key suite um, let's talk about the Next piano, the RMI Electra Piano. Where is it? I bet it's under analog keys. There it is, RMI keys. Okay, so um, if you've seen my video, I don't think I've very... Oh, yeah, you can look at my Lamb, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway Carpet Crawler video. It's a pretty good close-up of it. So there's three tabs, which are basically like filters and envelopes of a really basic sound, a piano sound, a harpsichord, and a lute. And you can blend them all together. There's a pianissimo markings, which is like a quieter version. Um, I think with Tony Banks, piano harpsichord is the one. Definitely the one. Um, I, I have to be honest, I have not studied the Gabriel concerts very very well because my band doesn't just play that era. We leave that up to the musical box, who do it very well. So uh, I've only looked at this instrument on like 76 and 77. Um, so on seconds out, on the piano part, he's using just piano. Uh, what else? You listen to this, like one for the vine on the 77 tour, he kind of switches between piano and harpsichord. He uses it both as a piano and the synthesizer, kind of. But um, let's pull up piano harpsichord. <laughs> and I'm going to turn off, um, turn off the Leslie for now. We'll talk about the effects a little bit later. Okay, so yeah, that looks like it. I have the wooden version, which weighs approximately 17,000 tons. And uh, Tony Banks had the three, I have the 368. He had the 368X, which was, uh, which was just a um, plastic case. And I bet weighed a little less. Um, it sat on his Mellotron. So these, I, my, I actually have these legs on mine. And then something else, when I got my 368, did not come with a um, the pedal assembly. Instead, it had uh, a big stripe of blue spray paint. <laughs> um, what were they thinking? So uh, it was years. I was in, check this out, I was in, I went to New York City. I took my Mini Moog to be refurbished by a man named, I think his name was Jeff Blankenship. And he had a, uh, it, it's a shop. It was like him and then guys younger than me that were like techs that he was kind of apprenticing. It was really cool. It cost me a lot of money. But I was, in, and the dude was like Richard Wright's keyboard tech. And, uh, and it was like you're standing in his office and there's like wall pa backstage passes from the wall shows. I really just wanted to talk to that guy for an hour. But um, he was a really cool British accent. And uh, while I was there, it was like a candy shop. And I was like, I have an RMI piano. Do you know anything about the pedals? And he walked into a closet and came back a minute later with one. And it was, it's like a, it's got a couple cables that come out of it. So one of the jacks is a weird size, like a Bell telephone operator console. And uh, it has a sustain pedal and a swell. So he definitely used that 
you can't play carpet crawlers without the sustain pedal. You can't do suppers ready and all that stuff without the swells. You would use it when he added an organ mode, you would do swells. This is where things cause problems if you're using samples. And I'm curious if I ever am going to run into this is, you know, if you hold the pedal down and you use samples so at some point playing piano, your computer is going to get choked up and when you play it on a real RMI, you just hold the pedal down and the decay just goes away in piano mode and uh, you don't have to worry about it. But I found when I tried using samples live of an RMI, I was constantly fluttering the pedal because it was just my computer was going to explode. So if I play this sound as is, ew. Why are there all those effects and why is there a decay on it? Let's open this. Well, what? what? Why is there a release envelope on this? Maybe if you want to play. Oops. Forgot about my octave switch. So you can see the, the the GUI and you can see that I'm only playing those notes um, very detached. If I hold the pedal down. So maybe maybe whoever made this preset said the people buying this want carpet crawlers, end of story. Um, so what I would have to do with this in order to make it like an RMI my goodness there we go okay what's funny about a, um, an RMI not funny this is actually evil and cruel it's 68 keys and each key has its own oscillator so you've got a tune you don't have to do it before every gig, but you've got to tune every oscillator. So that's that much parts that can go wrong in that thing. I haven't powered up my RMI since I made my video last fall. I expect, like every time I turn that thing on, I, I expect to open the lid and it's going to be like the Ark of the Covenant. There's just a handful of dust inside. And then my face melts because I look like that guy. So um, it's a little... It's really scary to play with one live. I don't know why I did it. Now, I don't see a... Uh, I don't see a way to change these tabs. It looks like you'd have to do it ahead of time and create your own presets for all of the modes. So switching between sounds like Tony Banks does on some of them, organ mode on and off and supper's ready you'd have to you would have to make your own patches there's no way about it what i was starting to say was the uh on my rmi by the way it's 68 keys and if you probably are using a 61 key controller for this trust me you you need all the keys especially for things like um dance on a volcano with the low octaves that he's playing so uh if you can get away with 61 keys and you're constantly fiddling with the octave button, great. Um, I, it's it's tricky. I, I would rather do this on a just not not worry about it. But I'm someone that's coming from playing those keyboards first, and then I go to do it on a controller, and it's like, oh, I forgot. So um, I would do this with the decay envelope. All right, let's let's look at um, carpet crawlers. Well. That's probably, there is no sustain envelope on the piano mode. And the lower you go on the notes, the more. So this is a choice you have to make with the software. That's what it, that's what it's like. I'm going to lower the octave. I mean, 
do you, do you know the Dr. John album that I'm talking about here? Whatever that is, whatever key that's in. In the right place. Oh my God. Do Dr. John, producer Alan Toussaint, meters, member Art Neville, all playing keyboards on one album. And the RMI is like on every song. True story. That's why I bought my RMI. <laughs> I wasn't, when I got it like 15 years ago, I had no, I knew that it was used by Genesis and Rick Wakeman and stuff. And I'm a big, huge Yes fan, but uh, I really just wanted a funky, weird keyboard. Uh, what is that? It, the release, now I'm playing uh, Alan Toussaint parts. Uh, um, the That's probably, that's if you take a picture of that amp envelope. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's pretty good. It sounds pretty dull to me. That's too long of a decay. I don't know. I'll never, guys, I'm never going to AB this. So maybe that's carpet crawlers. Let's, uh, let's put on the um, pedal and see. some things I'm hearing it like clipping so maybe it's maybe I have this instrument too hot is there a uh, is there something here oh polyphony keep that in mind when you're holding the volume down Still sounds a little gritty to me. So uh, I think this is a good start in that it's a clean interface to get the envelopes that you like. Uh, I, I'm not going to demo it here, but you can just listen to my videos. Um, like if you look at the end of Squonk, when you on the 368, when you hold down the build and sustain pedal, you get a shorter uh, decay, and I'm sorry, let's put it this way. You put it on organ mode, you hold it down. It rings out for a very long time, but it fades gradually. If you listen to um, the, the middle section of 11th Earl of Mar on the 77 tour, he's doing, I guess, I think he used that roll in the string synth. Uh, with a phase shifter, but then he's using the phase shifter on the RMI, RMI live, and you can kind of hear what that sounds like. But then if you have it in organ mode and you press down the sustain pedal, the decay in the envelope is shorter than it is if you just held the note. It's longer than piano mode. So you've got these envelopes to think about that the RMI did when in piano mode and you played a note and held it down how long was it and then you held the pedal down in piano mode probably the same then you had it in organ mode and held the note down that's really long but then you use the pedal in organ mode and it's long but 
a little shorter. And uh, I could work on it for a whole year and never be happy with it. It's just kind of quirky. It's like scaled across the instrument, different release envelopes per key. So kind of like we did with the ARP Odyssey plugin, uh, we might have to tweak some things like the tuning we did on that one. Um, I think this is the time where I should say, why can't someone that's good at this stuff model one of these? Why do we have to deal with sample libraries? My God. I don't know anything about it, but if any of you have gotten this far and you're like, oh my God, I would love a modeled RMI. Now there is one that I've never played. Um, it's for 32-bit PC. I, what do you guys think of that? I bet it's probably really cool. And what I'm asking for is a 64-bit improved <laughs> one. So um, if anyone that knows how to do that kind of stuff and wants to go in with me, I have an, I, I will sit here. We can, I'll make any recording you want. I will record it. Uh, let's get that thing happening. A modeled RMI for 64-bit updated with input from people that actually have one and play it. End of rant. Okay, let's, um, let's get the effects going. This is too long for such a horrible instrument. Um, it really, guys, don't you don't want one of these. I'm going to put the phase 100 after the Fender Blender. I saw someone on social media share a probably a lamb session. It's like Tony Banks in the living room somewhere with and he's got the fender blender propped up on his rmi and then by the time you get to the tours after he has these built in to the rmi pretty slick so uh let's just keep the phaser on and i'm just going to do a big envelope here maybe there's no sustain envelope on those oh. We can, we'll talk, maybe we'll talk about these different settings. Like in phase, narrow, in phase. No, maybe I'm using the wrong terms, but if you just look at the dots. In, wider, out of, more out of phase, narrow, more out of phase, wider. really good when you have the release envelope right like on a real rmi how much you separate the notes with the fender blender really behave i mean it's funny you'll really change the way you play you play things so um <laughs> That is the uh, the way he did that in 76 and 77, which I have wrong on my video. I just did single notes. So octaves. Now, um, if you're thinking, eh, sounds all right. Well, when he got rid of the Leslie, he put in a chorus, putting it at the end so it's stereo. Not completely accurate. I'm not tweaking things, but uh, I think you hopefully have the idea here um, about the signal chain of the RMI. Okay, so make sure you've got 68 keys if you're doing those low notes. 
make sure you uh, kind of understand how the part is played and what to do in lieu of organ mode versus piano mode. And by the way, the, the tab on the RMI doesn't say piano mode. It's like organ mode on or off. Um, <clears throat> do you want to hear the... Uh, let's do it this way. I'll let you hear the piano by itself. And let's turn off all these effects. Turn that on. Oh my God, what a terrible envelope. Sometimes when I change things and I'm recording the screen video, there's a de delay. So there should not be delay on this. All right, I'm going to do something brave. So I haven't done a Firth of Fifth video yet. I've had a lot of people ask about it. Uh, I just know that I have to revise it. It was one of the first songs I did with my band. And I know that I maybe don't have wrong notes, but I'm missing notes. So this is what I had previously done for the piano part. But this is for this sound. So go easy on me. It's just a piano sound. Uh, with the boss chorus. <laughs> It's not even right. What the heck? Oh, decay. Okay. Okay, I had to change the octave on my controller for that because I needed I'll take it from there. I'll take it from there. So it's not the sound is not right. The playing is abysmal. Um, and I would tweak this much further if I were doing a seconds out show anytime soon, but I'm not. And maybe I'll just bring my RMI out and do it that way. It's easy. It's less, it's like walking a tightrope if it's going to work, but a computer is not a hundred percent either. And it's just a lot less fun. So, um, so hope all of those sounds that I did need incredible amounts of tweaking and they're, they'll never be right, because I don't think this is enough to get it where it really should be. Oh, velocity. Like, that shouldn't even be on, right? That's to get the filter brighter, so it sounds like you're playing with, uh, you know, some kind of dynamics. Let's see. Yeah, no way. I should have turned that off from the get-go. That said... This is my favorite of the sampled ones, just because it seems like it's the best of both worlds. So let's do it. Come on, guys. Let's make a 64-bit modeled RMI. Man, you could have all the different versions. The 300, the Rocks Accord. You could get those uh, music from Big Pink sounds. Man, that would be cool. Let's do it. Some of you that are tech savvy, hit me up. <laughs>